Ladies and gentlemen, we're back into Satisfactory. And some of the times we'll need to make really advanced stuff that has lots of uses to actually use. And sometimes we need to get a proper and steady production of basic stuff to support the other things we'll need to make. So what we're going to do today is we have several options, but I've selected that today we'll need to get together and make some circuit things. As you can see here, circuit boards, they require 15 copper sheets per minute and they require four uh, plastics, which is uh, 30 plastics per minute. So 15 copper sheets per minute and 30 plastic per minute. And now we do have a production of 30 copper sheets per minute at this facility. And I don't know how much plastic production we have, but it's probably, it probably covers this pretty well. So we can make this just from the resources we have here, but we'll need to think a little bit about the future. So here I spawned in a manufacturer just to show you that we will need to have uh, just to make two and a half computers per minute we need 25 circuit boards per minute so that's kind of a lot and uh, yeah so so um, that sets us to need more than like two machines already and then i noticed here at adaptive control unit we need additional five circuit boards per minute so the absolute minimum production we can have of circuit boards is 30 per minute and a regular machine outputs 7.5 so we'll just do some math here 30 divided by 7.5 that's four machines so we'll need four machines that produce this in order to reach our needs that means that we're up to 15 times 4 60 copper sheets per minute and 30 times 4 120 plastic per minute and we are obviously not at that level quite yet so we'll basically need to upgrade our production quite a bit i've shot some aliens and i've also laid this beautiful foundation here so here we are at uh, the uh, oil facility we have a normal crude oil source we got a pure one and we'll need to figure out which one of them we can use and need to use so uh, at this little facility we have an oil pump at a normal which means we get 120 crude oil per minute if this was pure we get 240 uh, the limit of our pipe is 300 by the way so we can't do much more than 240 anyways otherwise we'll need to unlock pipes mark 2 in any case here we have the refinery and as you can see here we produce 20 plastic per minute the minimum plastic we need to produce is 120 and uh, here we can see we have 30 all per minute so if we go into and do some calculation we know that uh, 120 divided by was it 30 or no 20 needs uh, that the minimum requirement is six machines that are putting out a lot of uh, plastic so six machines that are fully producing plastic is the absolute minimum so six times 30 what's that then well six times 30 and, and this is of course calculating the oil requirement and that's 180 per minute uh, if we are going to use six machines so we could potentially overclock one machine with like 50% uh, and we'll get 180 I suppose um, and that would be nice and all but in all seriousness we might as well utilize the full potential of that source when we're going to use it so yeah and to do that, we'll just do 240 divided by 30. 
since they take 30 each, that's eight machines producing plastic. So eight refineries. So we're going to do plastic for, uh, what is it? Kung och Fosterland in Swedish. Um, we are going to put down our little refinery prefab we did before. So I basically need four of these blocks. And you can see that means we're also going to use the pure output anyways. So we can see where it lines up. And if you need some help with making these beautiful little designs, you should probably take a look at my previous tutorial. Because in that we go through how to make this design. What's happening with the shadows here, man? God, they're shaking. <laughs> yeah. So here we have inputs, outputs. They're gonna line up here. And I should probably make a little tower and put these down. And if you're saying like Jimodism shill, can you like show in a little bit more detail on how to make plastic? Uh, plastic manufacturing and stuff like that. Well, then I'd say please watch my basic rubber and plastic tutorial to get up to date. And if you're like, what the hell, what's about this prefab? Please watch the video before that. Uh, and some of you have asked for a playlist and I will tell you it has been in the description all along. So please look at my playlist in the description so that you can easily see the order of the videos as well. Uh, and just not the episode numbers. They're listed there uh, in that beautiful playlist. So here we got eight machines and we're going to go and set them up as plastic. I know I said before that um, residual plastic was more efficient and stuff like that and it kind of is if you want to do more fuel um, because you can do a lot of fuel with that but there is an alternate recipe or you can like get really efficient manufacturing with uh, polymerism but right now we really need a lot of plastic like for the polymer standard recipe well then you don't get a lot of plastic at all if you chose to go with a residual route so basically you want to produce he heavy oil residue and plastic just from the just from the start like that and and not this uh, residual plastic but real plastic smelly real plastic so basically just control c and control v set up all machines like this and here we can see the result of this is only 160 plastic per minute so we're not gonna be a lot above the uh, like requirement to be honest just so you know that we're connecting up some stuff by the way as obviously the input side and the output side. This is a linear design. It's an inline, um, well, little template. And again, previous video, but it's really nice like that. Um, we're just gonna connect it up like this. We're having an input, but we're not having an output. So this is of course the output. Uh, we have output of plastics. So we need to connect up this, but we don't have an input of solid. So we can actually remove them uh, for the input side. We only have inputs on liquid for this particular setup. Quick tip! So basically when you're trying to place down your oil extract or mine or whatever you might wonder which angle is like straight. The tip is to basically walk so that you can line up a surface that is straight and then you'll see which angle is actually actually the straight one. Very easy. Well, in any case, um, this particular factory will not be super decorated actually, uh, because I'm actually going to save that for a later tutorial, uh, because w we all have discussed a little bit about um, you wanting some decoration tutorials, because apparently you, some of you at least, think that I build nice. And I, did, I didn't know that uh, you think I build nice, because I look at all of these uh, different uh, like creatures, what they're called, Exclipse and whatnot, and they're really, really good. They make beautiful builds. And when I'm seeing their designs, I'm like thinking, wow, that's, that is uh, probably above the level that everyone builds. But okay, yeah, well, take some time. Who, who, 
like I'm like it's cool, but damn, I do we have time for that? <laughs> and as you know, I'm not building as nice as they are building. I I build a little bit more. Uh, I I like to build it decorative, but I like to build it more time efficient. I'm not doing the tricks with um, like we showed in the hypertube tutorial, for example, when we go into select the random thing and and like what is it? Let's a flat thing rather, and and then build something like you know using that to like precision place blocks and whatnot. I don't do that, but I do build apparently according to you decently decoratively so for this particular factory I'm going to use this as one of several examples on how to build nicely um, right now what, what the only thing I'm doing is lining up the pipes and stuff in an order that's okay but I guess what you mean is the interiors and exteriors of stuff a little bit make them walkable make them accessible and like just make them look look decently neat so we're gonna cover that a little bit later on but in any case this one is connected up here uh, we can connect it up to power and we can do it a little bit temporarily as for right now just because we're going to need to fix that a little bit later well the machines are popping along. You can see they're each getting power there. You can see the consumption is rising. Isn't that quite beautiful? All right. The next and next machines is getting, getting their fill. Absolutely cool. Well, basically, here we have it. We have 160, 160 plastic per minute popping out there. All the machines are running. Everything should be completely efficient and hoo, 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 our consumption is really closing in on that. Right, now we'll just need to deal with the heavy oil residue. As you might remember from last episode, we do have a little line of mixed rubber and plastic going home. So I added a new line for plastic only because otherwise we're going to encroach the bandwidth and basically cause some risk of clogging. We don't really want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide up the uh, the plastic and the rubber inputs here. So here you can see we've got both of them there. This splitter obviously has to be switched into a smart splitter and that's exactly what we're going to do. There we go, uh, connect up the plastic. And there we go, we have connected up the plastic for real. So the plastic and rubber is now perfectly divided. Very nice. So we need to deal with the heavy oil residue now. And honestly, I'm just gonna show you a very, very, very um, lazy way to deal with the heavy oil residue as for now. This is a temporary solution. Um, we should probably set up some more power because our consumption is uh, really getting a little bit high there. But in any case, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just take this here, the heavy oil residue, take it from the output and put it into another little uh, refinery. There you go, we have uh, 8 times 10 per minute, so we have 80 per minute to deal with. And this thing is now here, so what are we going to do? Well. We need to do something with the residue, and that happens to be, for our case, petroleum coke right now. We don't have anything to do with the fuel. So we're only using 40 per minute, which means, of course, we'll need to boost this to 200%, and now we're producing 240 petroleum coke per minute. Now, this would be a great space to connect up some more... Um, some more production to make more power but i'm just gonna connect this up to a temporary awesome sink and be happy about that so this machine is just going to feed in this and we have solved the issue temporarily uh, right we're gonna decorate this factor a little bit later on but right now we have successfully made 
the plastic we need to make the circuits. Isn't it so nice to just go up to your trash bin and just throw in the excessive stuff you don't really need? Ah, beautiful. And there it goes, being recycled. So in any case, uh, what we're going to do now, we have solved the issue with plastic. We got it in our base. Now we need to solve the issue with uh, copper. And if we're gonna have uh, four machines doing that, we can check again a little bit what, what we're up against here. A little reminder. We're doing circuit boards, which means 15 copper per minutes, uh, 15 copper sheets per minute. Uh, and that's of course per machine. So in total, it's 60 copper sheets per minute. Copper sheets, um, 60 per minute. We need six. Um, we need we we need six constructors to have this output. Six times 20. Six times 20 is 120. That's the the amount of copper ingots we need. 120. Fortunately, we did. Uh, check a little bit before uh, that we had some copper at the base because we needed copper for some other stuff. So here we have the copper and we have an input of 240 per minute and we have an output of 80 per minute. So we're only using 80 which means we can use a lot more. Beautiful! We already have the capacity here. So this is the premiere of using the eye constructor. These are four constructors in here. So won't really cut it, but we can do two different things. Either we can just boost some of them to produce some faster, or we could uh, have two of these and make them less uh, like, like, like uh, turn down the clock speed. Uh, and I'm going to go for the option of uh, just boosting some of them because I feel I got a little bit uh, too like many in my inventory right now. I don't really. I don't really need to keep all of them. So we're going to boost this little facility here. So we're going to input the copper. We're actually going to take the copper straight from the belt and do a direct input into this facility. So we're actually going to change the input to that container instead, the input value. Oh no! We're just updating the stats here before we connect it up. So we actually know here. Input 120. So we're going to, of course, use 120, so that's why we did that. And we'll go with a regular splitter. We can steal from them up here. Go and select some logistics, Mark III conveyors. Go down here to, we can see the top level there. I think we, we can actually go straight with these ones. And for this, Mark II belts is indeed enough. So here is, of course, the input. We can just connect it up there. And possibly we can do it a little bit neater, possibly. Uh, but other than that, they should be going into here automatically. And we can then connect up this to instead produce something we set, like copper sheets. There we go, copper sheets and copper sheets. And two of these needs to be overclocked. And I just changed my mind. Let's not overclock all of these to 50%. Let's just add another facility. It's so easy. We, <laughs> we do have the blocks to spend right now, so we might as well put another block behind it. I constructor, okay. Here we go. Let's see if we can line them up. Yes. So here we can see in action, we're behind these buildings. And thus, we connect up the, uh, the outputs there. And we can connect up the inputs of the materials to the other machines. And then we of course need to connect up the outputs, which is going on the second layer here. Between this space and this space. And then we'll just go into here and set up these machines to produce uh, copper sheets. So now we got 80 copper sheets per minute and that's of course a little bit more than we actually intend to use. So what we're going to do is to set this at uh, 50%, come on. 
Thank you. 50%. There we go. In this particular building, we're setting everything to 50%. Come on. Here we go. Because that means that this, this entire block will produce... Um, how? They're so... You have to click enter. Yeah, anyways, this entire block produces, of course, 10, 20, and the other block produces 40, which amounts to 60. Very nice. And connect up to power. So now, we are starting to produce them copper sheets. Beautiful. So we have copper sheets, we have some space more, and you can probably imagine that we are going to use this space to add some assemblers. Because the assemblers will produce the, uh, will combine the plastic and the copper sheets into making some circuits there. So how many assemblers do we need then? Well, you already know, we talked about that before, and it's four. That means we'll need two such blocks. I'll need to get some plates. Right, so here we got, we uh, extended the little foundation there. So here we have the same blurs. We're going to line them up so that they can get a nice little input like that and output. Connect it up, just flush like that. Ain't that quite beautiful? So here we have it. Uh, we can now enter the facility and set up these machines. And they're of course supposed to be, let's see here. They're supposed to make circuit boards at 100%. So we're just going to copy and paste for all of these machines. Ctrl C and Ctrl V if you have forgotten that. Right, so do keep in mind to connect up the different facilities here. And... Uh, of course, the inputs and outputs as well. So we need to go down here. And here we go to here. We can see some copper sheets are coming in here. And that's super cool. Now, this is the uh, first assembler. We have a second assembler block later on. So, of course, these assemblers, like, they should go into the input here. So that's, like, the interesting part here when we're using this. Um, where we can just take this and put it to the input. So now we need to select which is gonna be the top or bottom input. So we're going to go with having these here. Let's see here. Should be connected up. And we can of course check that. Now we're, we're, we're real crammed space here, man. <laughs> I unfortunately have to remove some wall box here to get in. You can see they are indeed connected up quite nicely. I don't know what happened visually here, but it's working. Man, what's happening with my conveyor lifts, man? Well, they are working. That's the important part. So we can see the conveyors are going in there. I'm just going to be lazy instead of climbing or doing like this. You can see it's putting in copper sheets here and here too. So that's really nice. Now we have the copper sheets and the, uh, yeah, well, the copper sheets and all the assemblers set up. So I think that's pretty neat. Right then. Then we, of course, have uh, done that, but we need to connect up the plastic still. So as you might imagine, this is some type of uh, throughput thing here, and the plastic is going to go below there. We have already connected up the plastic between these two blocks uh, here and there. So now we'll just need to go to our source we drawn home to connect that up. So very simple and easy design to set up with our new templates. And we'll of course need to make some nice foundations and stuff like that to really make them look more polished. But I'm just going to go over there and grab some plastics. All right, I dragged the plastic here in a decent manner. Man, I'm wondering if we'll need to do some, redo some of it later, but we have at least found a, a nice way to input it. And yeah, it goes into the side here and later on, we're going to add some accessibility features and stuff like that to make it look nice. I think we're gonna leave that for next episode 
um, or another episode where we talk about the uh, aesthetic design because again as said I really do want to show you how to build in a neater way um, so we have made a platform we put our prefabs on but then what so we'll basically I'm just gonna show some simple tips on how to like make the finish finish line fine because again this is a series and you should definitely watch the different videos in this series so that you can definitely well do whatever um, or follow it exactly or do do it however you want to but in any case plastic should start popping in here very soon as soon as this conveyor splitter decides to give some to this one as well look at that oh my god we actually have an error in the blueprint we'll need to load it and resave it here and uh, let's see here connect up this oh look oh look so apparently the uh, the, the the smart yeah i see all right so apparently uh, somehow the conveyor splitter was ended up in the wrong direction that's the reason why it's not uh, flowing smoothly here all right so we do need to change this blueprint and that gives us a great chance on on showing how to actually do that so there we go plastic can be connected up and stuff like that and that's all, <laughs> that's also why you might need to check and then resave some of the blueprints fortunately it's a very easy process so while this is producing our uh, output we're going to go to the blueprint designer load it in and fix this so here we are at the blueprint designer so what we're doing we're just walking up to it like this well uh, and we're gonna load blueprint buildings and no it's not this one clear blueprint right we're gonna load the i assembler so we already know what was wrong in here and we're just going to open up this space here by the way i think we're actually going to do a slight modification so they're more easy to walk through we're gonna change this openings here to um, gate hole walls and then we should check inside of here uh, this is where the conveyor splitter is lined up in the wrong direction so we of course need to remove these parts here go and turn the conveyor connect it up there and of course connect up this one to the output portion and that should be set up correctly now so now we basically just go to the blueprint designer again when we fix this little thing and we're going to save the blueprint and now we have a little thing here uh, that says a blinking thing name already used um, saving will overwrite the blueprint that's currently using this name so we're gonna save the blueprint and we're gonna confirm and that's basically that we have done that so we can now clear the designer and well we can actually take this that's that now we have fixed that issue so in future uh, future moments we're using this blueprint we should not get into the same trouble here so that's quite nice indeed all right we should be connected up now <laughs> and i'm sorry for not uh, doing the complete polish this uh, episode all in one but that is partly because I'm a little bit tired and partly because I do want to show you properly how to decorate and do th things very nicely but you can see this is looking more nicely than our builds usually does but that's only because we have those beautiful templates that we're using here and I have also taken the opportunity to connect it up somewhat to the main grids walkways 
just so we can get here easily and accessibly. And I should have more walkways and grids all over the place actually, but yeah. That's basically that. So we should be checking and just see that everything is running perfectly. Now we already done the math, so we should be expecting to see 100% ratios in all of them. We might have some small clog up things since I suppose that they are indeed running. Oh, look here. No, no. Okay, this is 74% efficient. That's weird. So I wonder if this is an issue or if it's just waiting to get connected. Oh, 75, 76. Okay, it's counting upwards. We did a math. So they should all be walking upwards. Yeah, they're not full up here. That's why. That's why. Okay. Should be no issue then. So we are walking through here. You can see this machine there 100%. And 100% here. And the next two machines, they are also running at 100% efficiency. Well, isn't that quite nice? We should, of course, connect it up to be a little bit more uh, accessible via some outside walkways and stuff like that. But not to spoil you for future <laughs> iterations of this little series. We just connected up the walkway outwards like this and here we're going to have a little storage unit. So we started to store up on these. So I do hope that this has been useful for you and we are going to use these materials to make computers uh, as well in future ones. So hope you enjoyed it and do remember to check out the other episodes in this series. It is a series and it really counts on you watch them. Uh, binge watch all of them to really uh, understand and basically tune in properly to what we're doing here and understanding each part of it. In any case, I will say a huge thanks to the people who are supporting the channel every month, namely our commissioned officers in the army of Jimidism, Admiral Super Dave, Captain Y, Stellar Lieutenant C2, Venerated Lieutenant Par by Greed, Lieutenant Asteria, Lieutenant Tyler Russ and Lieutenant Vincent Veritas. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel and I'll be seeing you next time. Remember to like the video and I'll be very happy and I'll see you next time. This is your host Jim Desm. We're signing out. <laughs>